when you say you had a good day, what do you, what, in terms of what, what are you looking for in a, a day like this, first well, day of fall I'm, camp? I'm looking, I would expect, you know, solid communication. That's so important. Um, you'll get good effort at the beginning. Uh, you'll have excitement at the beginning, but, you know, the execution is far from perfect on both sides of the ball, but I felt that the, uh, the communication was good. I thought the uh, practice was well organized, which is those things should be expected when you move into this position. So, um, you know, I don't know what it would take for me in year three to walk into practice number two and say, we just had an extremely excellent practice. It's basically what I would have expected, and that's what the kids should expect, and they shouldn't be rewarded for that either. It's the way it should be. One uh, face missing today is Craig Evans. Do you expect him here, or what's the latest on him? Yeah, he'll be uh, he'll be here at some point. He's taking care of his business, and Craig is exactly where we knew he would be when we recruited him. So he's done what we've asked him to do, and um, we'll just take it you know, day by day as we move through time here. And um, There's a couple other young men that we hope to get here, but we've also added some guys that uh, we're excited about. So. Craig is taking care of business. One of those guys, Thomas Tyner, what were your kind of first impressions of seeing him out run with the guys today? It was good to see him out here. Thomas has done a great job since he's been here on the field, off the field. Um, I think he's already developed a bond with his teammates. Uh, you know, talked to Ryan and all, you know, talked to Thomas actually a couple, three days ago, and he's going over to Ryan's house and uh, to have dinner with them, take their girlfriends with them, to either go out to eat or cook some dinner, one of the two. So I think he's fit right in. Seems very happy. He looked good out here today. He was, you know, he was productive. Uh, Another back that really caught my eye today was, was Calvin Tyler. Uh, he jumped off the, off the charts for me. Um, for him and I realized it's just helmets and moving around, but for a young man coming here for the second day of practice, I thought he uh, did an exceptional job. But uh, Thomas is adjusting well to where we're at, and, which he should. You know, this is not his first rodeo. Um, so he's, he's right where he should be. How do you kind of gauge like what your expectations are for, for Thomas at this point in fall camp? Well, Thomas is going to get a bunch of reps. and. So we'll see as, as he moves through. And we want to make sure that we have, like this whole football team, we want, to give, we want to give every kid every opportunity and possibly get to get better. But we also want to make sure we stay healthy um, as, as much as we possibly can. So he'll learn the playbook. It's, gonna, it's going to continue to grow and grow as he goes through these next 10 days or so. Um, but he's, you know, he's, a, he's a professional college athlete, which we ask our kids to be, and student athlete, a student athlete that uh, works at the highest level and this is nothing new to him so he'll handle it all well. Coach what did you see from the uh, three quarterbacks today? Three quarterbacks uh, we still need to continually as an offense I would say this we need to throw the ball more effectively. I, we did stick some routes down the field which was great to see. Uh, we had four or five deep balls today that were completed down the field in a very limited throw package right now there's not a lot of offense in there as far as the throw game goes so um, they seem to have pretty good command of the offense um, playing with the type of paces we want to play and so it was, uh, it was a solid day, but again, there's, there's so little offense in right now that it's hard to gauge the, the big picture. Coach, when do you start, or when have you started, or when did you start looking at CSU video? You know, those summer nights at home on the porch, do you watch CSU video? No, we actually, you know, we spent some time uh, in spring football on Colorado State. Uh, we obviously spent a lot of time developing a game plan throughout the season, which we do basically for our first three opponents as much as we possibly can. And, but then with them being the first game, you're going to go strictly off of what had taken place last year and then what you can grab off uh, internet, internet, social media, what have you, as you go through camp. So uh, we spent a lot of time understanding the personnel and you know, understanding exactly that was a team that had some good things happen for them last year and moving forward. As far as improving kind of your downfield passing game, where, where's the emphasis for, for you guys as a team right now in doing that? Right here. Right there. I don't even need to talk. You got it? It's simple. That's all you got to have there. Those boys get it done. When they get out there and you got the right guys, magic things happen. Um, past that, you know, communication is important and uh, coaches structuring the offense the correct way. But at the end of the day, it's, it's all about those guys. Last week when we talked to the players, they said they don't really feel like underdogs anymore. Is that sort of, you know, heading into year three, what are you, your sort of expectations for the for the team? I know I know it's so early, but mm -hmm. what, when you look at the layout of the team right now, what are your, what are your well, goals you for know, that? Well, the first part, first part of the question as far as the underdog situation, uh, these kids shouldn't feel that way. You know, you're sitting in year three, we're playing in a tremendous conference, and you know, we threw blows with a lot of play, people last year. Um, much improved from where it was. So I think our expectations are this, and I've told the team the same thing, is we're going to prepare every day um, until we get through Bend, and we're going to prepare to compete like crazy against each other. And every young man out here should try to be getting one notch up higher on the, on the depth chart every single day. Past that, we'll get ourselves back here and you know, still compete against each other, but shift basically into a Colorado State uh, situation as we move forward and prepare for that first game. And we should walk into every game, obviously, expecting to win like every team should. Uh, but as far as expectations, I said it before, so I'll say it again. 
this profession and for these kids in this conference. You win six or seven games, you get rewarded with a bowl game, so that's good. You know, eight and nine puts you in a position to be a very, very good team or a great team, if you will. And if you get double digits, you're an elite team. And that is the team's expectations right now to be elite because that opportunity is still out there for them. What was it like to, for you to actually see Seth back on the field? It's great to see Seth uh, back on the field, and Seth is exactly where he's been uh, once he was let go, and they said, okay, here you go, you're, you're ready to go, Seth, and you're full steam again. Um, he started that process that day, and he's handled that in the weight room, he's handled that in summer conditioning. He came out here today and made some plays. Uh, I think Jason Phillips is doing a tremendous job of continually helping Seth become a polished wide receiver, and Seth is doing a tremendous job of you know, uh, taking the coaching and applying it on the field. So. That being said, from a football standpoint, it's great to see uh, it's far more important for the life of a young man that uh, is a very special kid in my eyes and what he went through to see him out here. It uh, does a lot of good to me to see that happen for him and he's excited and our team's excited to have him back here. So one guy who's kind of coming back from something, Daryl Garrett sent at the quarterback spot. What have you seen from him kind of from the spring and now leading into the fall? You know, Daryl's done a very nice job of getting himself uh, the rehab that he needed and then the prehab once he got to that spot to uh, continually strengthen what he needs to strengthen to, to be as good a shape as he can and uh, get that ankle back to 100%. So I think he looks good. Um, he's excited to come out and compete and play. And he's done a nice job. He's always uh, a guy that, again, an experienced young man, and uh, not much is going to phase him in this uh, game that he plays right now. He's, uh, he'll handle it all well as he continues to move forward. He can continue to fight and uh, be the starting quarterback. That's his goal, just like it should be for every quarterback. Is there a certain point in camp in which you want to name a starting quarterback, or is that something you're just going to let play out itself? I mean, I'd, I'd like to name a starting quarterback today. Um, but those kids are going to tell us when the starting quarterback's named. And just like if there's a battle at a, at a defensive end spot, those kids are going to tell us when time is to get that done. But would we like to get it named and, or at least put stability on how we're going to play as an offense? Absolutely, as soon as we possibly can. And, um, you know, again, dictate by players. And, uh, see what happens. <laughs>